In this tutorial, I will explain how to integrate a where I am with Stripe multi-party payments. Stripe is a very well-known payment platform and it supports multi-party payments where sellers receive electronic payments from their customers. And you as a developer of the platform for sellers and their customers receive a cut from each electronic payment along with Stripe who have their cut as well. This can be quite lucrative for application developers. So there are three parties involved. Platform owner, that's you. Sellers, who use your product and receive electronic payments from customers. And customers, who make electronic payments to sellers. You, as a developer, need to register your platform with Stripe. And Stripe will give you API keys for testing and for live systems. The key will then have to be entered into your application. I will show you how to do it later. Before sellers can receive payments from customers, they need to electronically create an account with Stripe and answer a number of online questions. This process is called onboarding. Your AwareIM application needs to facilitate this process, and I will show you how to do this later. Finally, your AwareIM application has to allow customers of the sellers to make electronic payments for the goods and services they provide. You can read more about Stripe platform here. So let me go through each of the steps that you as application developer need to do to support Stripe multi-party payments. Let's enable Stripe payments for the sales portal sample application. This application comes with a where I am and it allows a particular company represented by the sales manager and members of the sales team to track orders for products issued to their customers. A product is represented by the product object, an order is represented by the product order object, which consists of line items, the line item object. Customers are represented by the custom object. So now I will show a modified application where I have added support to allow customers to make payments for the orders online. The Stripe integration feature is implemented in AwareIM as a number of plugins, which you need to purchase, and then AwareSoft will give you a number of required JAR files. So the first thing we need to do in the application is to allow the company to perform Stripe onboarding. Before onboarding can be done, a seller's account needs to be created with Stripe. For, for this, you need to define a special process implemented as an AwareIM plugin. So this process is called here Stripe Create Account Plugin. And the fully qualified name of the implementation component must be this. This process must take one parameter object. Here it is called Stripe Param, but it can have any name, as long as all the attributes of this uh, object have predefined names and are of predefined types. This object can be non-persistent. Let's have a look at it. Let's go through the attributes that we need in this object. Note that the names and types of the attributes must be exactly as defined here. The first one is account ID. Once the account is created, the ID of the account will be stored in this attribute. We will need this ID when we make the payments, so I prefer to save the result in the system settings object in an attribute called Stripe account ID. This attribute can have any name. Account type. This can be standard or express. Please refer to the Stripe documentation for details. Amount attribute name. Let's skip this one because it's only needed for payments. Same with application fee amount. Now company address, company email address, company name and company phone. These identify the uh, details of the company 
and you can if you know this information you can initialize these attributes with with the specific values and then they will be pre-populated for uh, stripe or onboarding the uh, sales portal sample application does not store these attributes so we will not use them we will not initialize them currency this this also this attribute is also required for payments only error message this stores any errors that the plugins uh, generate so we will need to check for the error message and display the error payment name also required for payments and uh, stripe api key this is where you specify the the key that stripe must have given to you now we need a process that performs the onboarding. Here it is. So the first line just uh, confirms with the user. And if the user hasn't confirmed, then the process is ended. The next line creates an instance of the Stripe param object that I was talking about and initializes it from the Stripe account ID attribute of the system settings object. If the ID has not been stored in the system setting object already, then the account will be created by this next line here and the results will be stored in system settings the next line here is very important it uses a special ORAM plugin that does all the housekeeping for the onboarding and then redirects to the URL that performs onboarding in a separate browser window when the user com completes onboarding or cancels, the new window will be automatically closed and the process will continue. Running this line here, which either displays an error message or a success message. The final step is to add this process to the application menu. Here I have added the onboarding process to the visual perspective. Let's see how this works. So when I log into the application, click on the online payments link, confirm, and then the browser opens a new window that goes to, the, to your Stripe account to perform onboarding and at the end of this process it will return back to where I am but here I will return without completing the process so I click on this link and we're back to the uh, application let's now review support for online payments in order to make payments customers need to be logged into the application they should see orders locate the one they want to pay and click a button to make online payment. I have added the custom object to the system user group to make sure that uh, they can log in, created customer access level, added a form for the customer. I have also added a query to manage customers. Enabled it in a sales manager menu. Added a flag to the product order object to indicate whether it has been paid. added a query to display orders for the logged in customer. And then I have added a visual perspective for customers.
Now the important bit. I have added the process that ex executes online payments. This process takes product order as input. This is the order that will be paid. Let's look at the process. The process will need the account ID. So this is the check that the account ID exists, followed by the message to the user. The next line creates an instance of the Stripe param object, initializing attributes relevant to payments. Let's look at these attributes again. The amount attribute name attribute indicates the name of the attribute in the order object that stores total amount of the order. So if we look at the product order object, we can see that the attribute that stores the total amount of the order is called total price here. So we initialize the amount attribute name attribute with total price. The application fee amount attribute indicates the cut taken by the platform. It can either be specified in cents, for example 1 to 3 is 1 dollar and 23 cents, or in percentages if you add the percent symbol, for example 2 percent, like here. The currency attribute identifies the currency of the payment. The payment name attribute describes the payment and this description will be shown to the customer. So some attributes may be initialized from the initial values, others need to be provided when the parameter object is created. By the way, you don't have to use the same parameter object for, uh, for payments, you can use a different one, but it must have attributes that I have mentioned defined. Going back to our process now. So here we initialize Stripe parameter object with the count ID and the payment name. And all other attributes will be initialized by default. The next line uses another ORM plugin to perform some housekeeping for Stripe payments and then redirects to the Stripe checkout page where the user can make a payment. Just like with onboarding, the page will appear in the new window. Once payment is completed or the user cancels, the process will continue and either display an error message or mark the order as paid. The final step is to add an operation for each order to invoke the payment process, provided that the order has not been paid already. This is done in the query that customers can see and we can see the operation with record here called pay online with the applicability condition and the process to be started. Let's see now how this works. So now I'm logged in as customer and I can see my orders. I can see that nothing has been paid here. So I select an order and click pay online. And we're taken to the Stripe payment page where we can complete payment. Here I will just return back. It is also possible to send an email link to the customer inviting them to pay a specific order online. Once they click on the link, they will be logged into the application and the process to pay online will automatically start. Although this functionality is not enabled in the sales portal application, the building blocks are there. And these blocks are the document template that represents an email that will be sent uh, to, the, uh, to the customer and the actual notification representing this email. All the magic happens in the document template. Let's have a look at the HTML code of the document template. 
this is where the link is generated. It logs in where I am as a custom object with a specified ID and then it executes the first command here that starts our process to make online payments. Note that the product order object is in context here and can be used. 